Right now, four tiny Earth-like planets are chilling around one of the closest star systems to us. We're talking second closest. These little rocky worlds are each about 20 to 30 percent the mass of Earth. So not quite Earth 2.0, but still pretty solid. Will one of them become our new home one day? Well, all of them are pretty close, so future humans might actually visit them someday. Not like next year or anything, but we could potentially send missions there. Don't expect any extraterrestrial neighbors, though. Those planets probably aren't home to life, or at least not anything we'd recognize. Let's take a look at them. The planets are called Bernard B, C, D, and E. How creative, huh? The innermost has a mass of 26% of Earth. The second one is a bit bigger, with a mass of 30% of Earth. The third one has 4% more mass than the previous. And the outermost is… no, it's not the biggest. Actually, it's just a baby, with a mass of 19% of Earth. All the planets are likely rocky, like the inner planets of our solar system. They orbit their star very closely. That's why they only need a few days, under a week, to make a full circle. Now, what about that star these little guys are circling? It's called Bernard's star. Astronomers have always had a hunch there might be at least one planet orbiting it. First off, this star is super close, in cosmic terms, of course. Only the Alpha Centauri trio is closer to us. Bernard's star is just under six light years away, which is basically next door. At the same time, it's not like our sun. Bernard's star is a red dwarf, the most common kind of star out there. It's got only about one-sixth the mass of the sun. But red dwarfs are a goldmine for learning about planets outside our solar system. And studying Bernard's star can help scientists figure out what planets around single stars, like our sun, or this red dwarf, are like. Or what kind of environments red dwarf planets might have. And most importantly, we might finally find the answer to this super important question. Could any of these places actually support life? For the longest time, scientists thought there might be a big Jupiter-like gas giant hanging out near Bernard's star. All because the star has a little wobble. It looks as if it shifts towards and away from Earth over time, so something might be tugging on it. Interestingly, it wasn't a giant planet doing the pulling. According to a study from March 2025, it's actually four smaller rocky planets, each about four times the mass of Mercury. One day, they ganged up and started tugging on the star together. These planets are incredibly close to their star, so close that they can whip around it in just a few days. Sadly, because of that, they might be way too hot for anything like life. Besides, since these four seem to explain all the star's movement, the researchers think there's probably nothing else orbiting the habitable zone. So, there's no Earth 2.0 orbiting around Bernard's star. Still, it's an awesome find, especially since this star is basically our cosmic neighbor. Plus, the system might not stay off-limits forever. With nuclear fusion engines or light sails, futuristic propulsion systems that could make the trip way faster, way faster, we might probably go there one day. And then we'll finally figure out if these worlds are really lifeless and maybe even colonize them. Now, let's see how scientists found the star's hidden planets. Normally, Astronomers spot exoplanets when they catch them crossing in front of their stars and blocking some light. But Bernard's star is tricky, because in our view, it's like we're looking from above the system, so its planets don't block the light in the usual way. That's why they call it the Great White Whale of planet hunting. To get around this, researchers used a super sensitive instrument called Maroon X attached to the Gemini North Telescope on Hawaii's Mauna Kea volcano. Over 112 nights spread out across three years, the telescope picked up tiny changes in the star's movement. These shifts let scientists figure out how many planets must be tugging on the star, as well as estimate their sizes. At first, they found three planets. But then they used another device, deliciously called Espresso, 
and located at the Very Large Telescope in Chile. And only after a shot of this espresso did they find a fourth planet. By combining the data from both instruments, they were able to more or less confidently say their findings were solid, not just random glitches in the data. Even though red dwarfs like Bernard Star are the most common type of star in the universe, most are way too far for us to see planets around them easily. These new findings suggest that small rocky planets could be pretty common around these stars, and that's huge for future discoveries. Now, finding new exoplanets is cool and all, but it might be even more exciting to dwell on their birth and evolution. And a recent study has made the sweetest discovery ever. Newly born exoplanets might actually look like Smarties, that popular British candy, rather than spheres. We've always kind of assumed that baby planets are born ball-shaped, but they might be oblate spheroids instead. A team of scientists from the University of Central Lancashire in England used computer simulations to build a model of the formation of planets in dense gas disks surrounding young stars. After that, they compared these models with actual observations and noticed that the young planets took pretty unusual shapes. The thing is that even though almost 6,000 exoplanets have been discovered so far, astronomers still don't have a clear understanding of the sequence of events marking their birth and early evolution. But this new research might finally shed light on this process. So, the astronomers examined the formation mechanisms of gas giant planets like Jupiter and came to the conclusion that planets built up from their centers. After that, the researchers focused on the initial shapes of such planets. They were also interested in how they could encourage the growth of these planetary seeds. How could they turn into such massive planets, some of them bigger than our solar system's largest giants? According to the standard theory of the formation of planets, such growth happens gradually and smoothly. First, dust particles start to stick together, turning into larger and larger objects. This process lasts for a very long time and is known as core accretion. It's the model of planet formation scientists favor. There's another theory, according to which planets' birth might happen over shorter periods of time. This data involves a protoplanetary disk, a disk of gas which makes up 99% of its mass, and dust, around 1%. This disk orbits a newly formed star and, hypothetically, planets might form from this cloud. Protoplanetary disks are likely to be common byproducts of star formation. They might range in mass from 0.001 to 0.3 solar masses. Inside such disks, matter slowly moves inward and dust particles grow bigger to the size of pebbles. At one point, after two to three million years, a giant rotating protoplanetary disk breaks into pieces and that's how baby planets are born. This theory is known as the disk instability model. As for the model built by the team, it seems to support this second, less favored theory, rapid planet formation through disk instability. All because this theory explains how large planets can form relatively quickly at pretty large distances from their host stars. As for the weird flattened shape of these newly formed planets, it might be due to the material falling onto them. Most likely, it goes mainly to the poles of new planets. One of the main conclusions of the research is that the appearance of young exoplanets, as we see them from Earth, may vary depending on how they're angled. If Earth is directed face-on to an exoplanet, it will seem that the latter has a traditional spherical shape. But if seen on edge, a baby exoplanet will look like a real smarty. The team is going to continue to investigate the formation of planets with the help of an improved computer model. They believe they can find out the role the environment around a young planet plays in affecting its shape and formation. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.